Welcome back. Nigeria has officially started selling crude oil and refined petroleum products in Naira. This was announced by Finance Minister Wali Edu. The initiative, which began on October 1st, follows a directive from the Federal Executive Council. Uh, key stakeholders, including government officials and representatives from the Dangote Group and Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NMPC, met to review implementations of this strategic move. Now, the policy aims to enhance Nigeria's economic growth, uh, stability and self-sufficiency. President Bolatinubu's administration approved the proposal in July, allowing NMPC to sell crude oil to Dangote Petroleum Refinery and other refineries in Naira. But the Nigerian Port Authority has also begun coordinating services to facilitate this process. Joining us now is an economist, Kelvin Emmanuel, to discuss this latest development in the oil and gas sector. Good to have you with us, Kelvin. So how beneficial is this uh, initiative on the long term, you think? Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. I, I think it's the right step in the right direction. And I should also mention that it's in line with the law. Because sections 109 of the Petroleum Industry Act of 20, 2021 specifies that uh, the government can either decide to sell crude oil to um, commercial refineries in the midstream sector in USD or in Naira on a willing buyer, willing seller basis. So it's in line with the law. And it's very important because when you look at the framework for pricing of PMS, you see that there is a global system for pricing gasoline all over the world. You have the PLAT system. Um, currently, the prices for PLATs per metric ton, per metric ton is about 1,341 liters of PMS, is anywhere between 680 and 700 US dollars. So what, what this Naira-based crude um, swap arrangement says, basically, according to what I've seen, is that the government is simply providing feedstock to the Dangote refinery in Naira at an agreed upon exchange rate. Um, I think the starting uh, amount is about 385,000 metric tons. It still has 265,000 metric tons it still needs to source from um, other, other um, areas. And so what it does basically is that it provides a framework where both the refinery and the government can agree on a certain amount of uh, PMS, that is the value of the crude oil, that is delivered to the refinery that will be provided to Nigeria to help with the backward integration efforts. And it also relieves the pressure on the Naira because before this arrangement, we've seen that the demand for FX to import crude oil um, has um, you know, affected the foreign exchange market. So this is really, really going to, over the next quarter, uh, the um, last quarter of 2024, relieve some pressure from the FX market. How much pressure it will relieve, I'm not exactly sure yet. So are we looking at a stronger Naira, looking at some of the things you've said that it would reduce the pressure on uh, our foreign exchange? Are we looking at uh, a stronger Naira and also a better economy when it comes to, we know that our economy is largely dollarized. Would we see a reduction in that and also boost, a boost in the Naira? Now, here, here comes the conundrum. Uh, well, let, here comes the conundrum. At the same time when the government has negotiated an arrangement with the Dangote refinery to swap crude oil for PMS, um, records show that for September deliveries last month, NNPC imported 814,000 metric tons of PMS into Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That translates to about 1 billion liters of PMS. That's anywhere around maybe, um, if you're looking at 30 days, you're looking at anywhere around 33 million liters on a daily basis. So my question is, does it make sense for the government to continue importing PMS into Nigeria? And the question about quality has come because some of that, most, that PMS is substandard and there's empirical evidence to prove that. You know, Does it make sense to continue to import when you have a functional refinery in Lagos? That's the question. So if you're talking about, is it going to affect the Naira? Is Naira going to strengthen? And will it also impact on exchange rate induced inflation? and also impact on the forward guidance for the Monetary Policy Committee that um, has to always align the inflation to interest yield curve. The question we now have to put back to the Nigerian government is, why are you importing PMS when you have a functional refinery in Lagos? That's a question we have to ask the Nigerian government. Mm. Indeed, Kelvin. Now, for independent marketers still not enthusiastic about Dangote's pricing on PMS, 
you know, it's uh, slightly cheaper than theirs. Uh, are they still relevant in the scheme of things now with uh, the emphasis on Naira? Well, and this question goes back to NNPC because, you know, you have um, NNPC says they are the sole buyer and it doesn't, um, you know, make very good reasoning or logical um, sense of explanation on why NNPC will be the sole buyer of PMS from the Dangote refinery, on why the government will not align with sections 205 and 206 of the Petroleum Industry Act that says that as soon as that act is enforced into law, and effective August um, 2021, Nigerian government was supposed to deregulate the pricing of PMS in Nigeria. Um, so one of the considerations, I think, in, you know, looking at it from the side of the government, if I was going to put myself in their shoes, is if you open the markets to other um, players and allow them to take from the refinery, it effectively means that you've deregulated the market. But the question becomes, What's the benefit of making NMPC the sole buyer from the Dangote refinery and continuing to ignore sections 205 and 206 and avoid deregulating the market? Since today, as we speak, there are places in Nigeria where PMS prices go for as high as 1,300, 1,500 Naira per liter. Now, let me explain something to you. So you have uh, dead infrastructure, piping infrastructure that is meant for evacuating PMS from the Dangote refinery eh, that was supposed to be used. You have the Atlas Cove, you have the Mosimi that has not been used. So Nigeria doesn't have like standard gauge rail lines vertically, horizontally to help to distribute um, products. Like, like, um, so if, for, for example, you see that about 55 to 60% of the products taken from the refinery actually goes by vessels and it comes at a cost. You also see that um, um, you, you, you have a situation where trucks take these products, they incur about 50 to 75 naira um, per litre in terms of cost to transport to different parts of Nigeria. And the price that you see for PMS in Lagos will not be the same price you see for PMS in Medugri or in Sabongari in Kano or in Potakot or in Yenegua because there is no petroleum equalization fund that has been applied by the government to see that they can net off that cost of haulage. And that's because you don't have infrastructure in Nigeria. So this question comes back to the government, right? Number one, why have you refused to deregulate the pricing of PMS based on sections 205 of the PIA, knowing fully well that Nigerians are not enjoying the benefits of regulated price? The only cities where these benefits are enjoyed are in Lagos and Abuja and in certain parts of um, the Southwest where it's closer to take products, you mm -hmm. know? Number two, why didn't you plan to build infrastructure for pipe evacuation? And there's so much pressure for haulage. And a lot of these trucks that haul goods still use diesel. Yeah, they've not converted right, to CNG, for example. I know for, there's still um, so um, much to talk about, especially when it comes to this issue of uh, selling crude oil in Naira to uh, Dangote Refinery. But we hope that in the coming days, it will become clearer. And all of those questions that you have asked will get uh, some answers. Thank you so much for your time on the show, Kelvin Emanuel, economist.